It's a different Australia now from the one I grew up in. Back then, a kid got an air gun at the age of eight and by 12, you were shooting a 22. But since the Port Arthur massacre, Australia's hunting brigade has kept its head down. Now, it seems, shooters are finally emerging from cover. A growing number of Australians, many of them from the city, many of them families, are taking up arms for recreation and fun. And that's prompted a whole new gun debate, with a shooting lobby trying to reinvent itself as a band of modern eco-warriors doing their bit to wipe out feral animals. With untold millions of wild foxes, dogs, cats, rabbits, goats, pigs and even deer, there's certainly no shortage of targets. A freezing winter day in the Victorian high country. But the deer marks are the most obvious. And a family pursue a pleasure and a craft all too common among Australians a hundred years ago. They'll take the tops out of them. Way back before we became a nation of suburbanites. No. Well, that's so fantastic and we've got the whole world to ourselves. Oh, you're the only person here. Yeah. Uh, it's the best feeling. Like, we just love the bush. That's what the bush is about. Yeah, yep, that's it. Colleen Turra and her family are townspeople, but at the weekend and on holidays, they become accomplished bushies. Deer hunters. He's leaving his scent. Probably. He's leaving his scent and letting the other stags know that he's the boss here, and of course we follow the prints, and uh, that's how we generally track them up. You love this, don't you? I do. I love it. <laughs> I do love it. The Turras, Colleen, Mike and the kids are among a growing number of Australians but taking up arms recreationally. More than three quarters of a million of us now have gun licenses. The deer could be over there watching us. Could be sitting up there, camped up, wondering what all the fuss is about. <laughs> and many prefer living targets, often feral animals like the samba deer that the Turras have in their sights. To shoot and to eat. I think a lot of people um, see me in my everyday life at home with the kids, don't even have any idea that I bring them to the bush and do this with them. And you have that other persona of killer mum. <laughs> yeah, not so much killer mum, but provider mum, I think, is provider the, mum, the yeah. word. Hunter mum. That's it. And um, I, I think it's been a good thing in my kids' lives because from the time they were small, they've had to learn the discipline and the, the responsibility of being around guns. Uh, other side. Down, push, push, that's it. The Turras reflect a new breed of recreational shooter. And look at your target. Australians from towns and cities who reckon they're conservation hunters. <laughs> they insist their sport is not bloodlust, but actually an answer to Australia's feral animal explosion. And with millions of pigs, countless wild dogs, cats, toads, foxes and the rest, there's certainly no shortage of targets. I consider myself a greenie with a gun. Yeah, we're not out there shooting wildlife, we're not damaging our ecosystem. A greenie with a gun. I'm a greenie with a gun. You know, we, uh, we take out the feral pests that have no known predator. A nice big belly. Someone's been eating lots of grass. The girls out on the town. You were this morning, weren't you? you One-time were on power broker for Pauline Hanson's One Nation Party, David Oldfield and his wife Lisa, today on her folks' family farm in country New South Wales, are now turning their attention to a different type of illegal immigrant. I mean, we're looking at foxes and we're looking at pigs. They're introduced species, they're feral. They're basically the illegal immigrants of their day, if you like, and I if we're straying into political incorrectness. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know about that. No, because that's what that's what they really are. They shouldn't be here. They shouldn't be here. They have no right to be here, and they're a danger to the rest of the landscape. It's early morning, frosty and shrouded in mist in the New South Wales Upper Hunter Valley. Unfortunately, the way the fog is, they could even be behind us. It's great. David and Lisa are out on dawn patrol. And there's uh, absolutely no shortage of pigs all over the place. Hunting one of our most damaging feral pests, the wild pig. I should have stuck a mob of them there, can you see? Well, see how they joined, that bigger one joined? Oh, yeah, there's a second one. Yeah. 
This morning's hunt certainly serves a practical feral pest control purpose. But if you didn't shoot this female, how many would she produce in a year's time? A good season, three litters. He said eight to, to ten piglets a, a litter. Yeah, yeah about 30. 30. But for Lisa, there's no denying there's a certain instinctive thrill that goes with hunting. Yeah, you know, when I go for a shoot, and just the peace and quiet of it, you're not stomping around the bush, you know, you're being very gentle, very quiet, you're stalking. Generally, it's, it's just communing with nature and then killing it. <laughs> Traditionally, hunting has been the domain of those on the land, but now city folk are hearing the call to arms. 131873 is the number. It is David Oldfield. You are on 2GB. It's 25 minutes And every past. night in well, his Sydney Talkback radio show, David Oldfield, like a true shock jock, sprukes his own cause. We're not talking about babe. We're not talking about a nice little pussy. And we're not talking about basil brush. We're talking about devastating, introduced feral animals. I love animals, but these animals are killers themselves. There are millions of them. That's a good thing for some of us to be doing something about. We're environmental sheriffs. <laughs> there we go. Let's get it really clear. This is a huge, huge problem. They can be part of the solution, but saying that recreational shooting can get rid of this problem, well, it's like saying I can take a water pistol out to the Black Saturday fires and put them out. It's, it, it's just not going to happen. Yeah, uh, what, one, two, three, oh, geez, there'd be a dozen there, at least. You can see the big trails. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tony Peacock is Australia's leading expert on feral animals. He's the first to acknowledge that we do have an out of control pest problem led by environmental enemies like the feral pig. Another big guy down here. Look at the size of this one, Charles. This guy down here, he'd be 100 kilos at least. He's a big bugger. Big old fat bass. But this is the only way we can actually get close to a live one, isn't it? Yeah, we've trapped one overnight here. And how many of them are there, do you think, at a guess? Um, the official answer is we have bugger all idea, <laughs> but it's, it could be 20 million pigs. But the reality is, if there's 20 million of these guys, you can see how much ploughing he's done in yeah, a few hours yes. in that pen. That's 20 million ploughs in the Australian landscape. It's not an option to just stick your head in the sand and decide that it's not a problem. But nor does Professor Peacock reckon that recreational shooters have the numbers or the firepower to put a serious dent in our feral animal population. If they want to contribute to conservation, that's great. They can play a, a part. It'll probably always be a small part of the total solution. And we don't want to fight with them and say, don't be part of it. But, nor should you, you know, just re-badge yourself and suddenly you've become these great born-again conservationists. But shooters groups, undeterred by the science, are seeking more areas and animals for hunting, including expanding into some national parks and state forests. Just remember to keep it pointed down, Anthony. And to bolster their ranks, there's a new generation of young hunters Lift it to your shoulder. like the Turras in training. Now when you're ready, you can squeeze the trigger. In Australia, it's legal for kids to shoot from the age of 12. And the ranks of young shooters have risen 30% over the past few years. Now, make your stance correct. Colleen's son, Anthony, is just 14 but already an accomplished shooter who recently bagged his first stag. Now, you have killed a deer, haven't you? Yes, I have. What's that feel like? Oh... It's a big creature. Yeah, it's... I can't really explain the uh, feeling of it. it. You feel sad for it, but you feel happy because, well, you've achieved something. But... Are your friends jealous of you? Oh, well, really a lot of our friends don't really know about it. You know, they don't really know what we do. We just think of it as something that we go and kill something, but we don't really. It might not be jealous, just scared of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what reaction do you get to the fact that you're teaching your kids to shoot and to kill? A lot of people think it's the wrong thing to do, that um, kids should be read um, conservationists, you know, no, no killing of animals and no altering of wildlife at all. But my kids are aware of how the life cycle works um, around them and 
they still respect and care about the animal that they eat. conception that their meat comes from a supermarket. They don't think any animals are actually injured or hurt. Do you think in a way you actually manage their numbers? I think hunters definitely manage their numbers. I think the opportunity is there for, for hunters to really make a, a, a dent in the feral animal population. And so for the weekend warriors, the shoot and the crusade goes on. Hunting, apparently, is back in fashion. Can we talk about fashion for a moment? Because I believe that you're wearing Victoria Beckham jeans and a very attractive ski jacket with a, a fur trim. Yeah, with, with fox a fur, fur, shot by myself. Not really. No. <laughs> Recreational shooters as an answer to the feral pest problem. It's a fair point to science to say the problem is ours, our province. Science is the answer, isn't it? You'd hope so. Yeah, look, ultimately you would think there'd be some more scientific solution. In between time, there's no reason why, indeed, it should be encouraged that people who are going to be responsible in their shooting get out and do their bit to keep the pests at bay. To shoot or not to shoot will remain a passionate argument perplexing many Australians though not out here in the bush, where when you're cold enough and hungry enough, it seems there are no ethical arguments. And I think a lot of the criticism that comes of hunting is born from misunderstanding. And unless you actually come out and experience it, you really can't be a full bottle on it. You can't know everything until you've actually tried it. If more people even did this occasionally, they would learn more about the country that they live in and then they would understand it better. So the hunter could be the person next door. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.